This time, instead of dealing with historical incidents, I will explain about Japanese villages. It may not be very interesting, but we hope you will see it through to the end. Until just 100 years ago, more than 90% of human life was lived through agriculture. That is to say, villages where people farmed were all that people had. In the previous issue, I explained the history of the village in the Muromachi period. This time, I will discuss the history of villages in the late Muromachi period. In particular, the period from after the Onan War to the Warring States period will be explained. Not to change the subject, but have you ever seen Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai? I can assure you that there is no other action movie as amazing as this movie. If you have never seen it, please watch it. The film is set in the Warring States period. In order to protect the farmers and their fields from the hordes of bandits that were rampant during the Warring States period, the farmers took on seven samurai to protect their village from the bandits. The peasants in this story are portrayed as helpless and powerless to fight. Actually, this is a fiction. In those days, farmers fought as foot soldiers on the battlefield while cultivating their fields. Villagers were both farmers and warriors. It was not until the end of the Warring States period that farmers were forced to live as farmers. Sausen, a group of independent farmers that gradually came into existence in the late Kamakura period, played a vital role in shaping the character of the Japanese people. The order of Sausen was governed by the autonomy of its members. Peasants who disobeyed the rules of the village were judged by Sausen. For serious crimes, there was even the death penalty. In order to live in Sausen, people learned how to live in harmony with their surroundings. From childhood, Japanese people are told, don't bother the people around you. For a detailed story, see History of the Village in the Muromachi period. Let's talk about politics in the Muromachi period. The Muromachi shogunate created by Takuji Ashikaga was a shogunate in which the power of the shogun was very weak. The founder, Takuji Ashikaga, was a very generous man who gave a lot of land to the samurai who joined his side. He was forced to do so because he had to make sure that he did not side with the southern court, which was his enemy. Many of the samurai who took his side were appointed to the position of Shugo. A Shugo is a position of local police authority. And the armed Shugo, backed by their military might, gradually took away not only the police power but also the right to collect taxes from the land of Jitos and manorial lords. In this way, the Shugo samurai strengthened their control over the land. In order to strengthen their own power, Shugo samurai were eager to take local samurai under their control. The local samurai were the Kokujin who united the Sausa. An incident occurred in which this Shugo grew to great proportions. It was the Onan War of 1467. This began with the issue of the Shogun succession. It eventually developed into a power struggle between Katsumoto Hosokawa and Susan Yamana, who were at the center of the shogunate administration, an incident that spread throughout the country. The rebellion lasted 11 years, with samurai from all over the country fighting in two separate battles. This Onan War was an event that changed the social environment of the time drastically. It was the rise of the Kokujin. Until then, battles had been fought by samurai with the right to ride, using bows and swords in single combat, and were based on rules. However, as the battle dragged on, both sides, running short of troops, sent low-ranking Ashiguru into the fray. They did not follow the rules of conventional fighting methods and attacked in groups. Many of them were peasants and bandits who had left their villages. Kyoto was burnt to the ground during the Onan War. This was the result of looting by Ashiguru. These Ashiguru were not loyal to the Shugo or Samurai who were the organizers of the war, but were more like mercenaries. They often mobbed and looted the towns. The Shugo, in need of fighters for the war, tolerated these acts. It is said that most of the important documents in Kyoto and most of the temples in Kyoto that exist today were burned down in this Onan War. Today, the famous temples that are tourist attractions in Kyoto were reconstructed after the Onan War. 
This devastation of Kyoto has a new effect. As a result of Kyoto, the capital of Japan, being turned into a wilderness, Kyoto merchants and townspeople began to migrate to new places to live, resulting in the creation of local cities called Little Kyoto in various parts of Japan. These towns include Kanazawa, Hagi, Suwano, and Gujo Hachiman. It was a great opportunity for the culture of Kyoto to spread to other parts of Japan. Those who remained in Kyoto also rebuilt Kyoto. They unite to protect their town from the tyranny of Ishiguro. It is similar to the unity of Sausen. They walled off the town of Kyoto and defended it. And like Sausen, they made their own arrangements for their town and conducted town politics. The Onin War also fundamentally changed the structure of the medieval country. A law enacted in 743 during the Nara period allowed newly cultivated land to belong to individuals rather than to the emperor. As a result, the nobles, temples, and shrines of the time competed to cultivate new land and make it their own manner. The samurai who took political control in the Kamakura period slowly invaded their lands. Nevertheless, manor still existed, and although the samurai directly controlled their lands, taxes were paid to the manorial lords in their own way. The Onin War was a large-scale civil war in which wars broke out in various parts of the country. The samurai, yes, Kokujin, who were at the center of Sausen, gained power in this civil war. They were the base for supplying soldiers in this battle. They worked under the Shugo and gained a large voice in the war effort. Many of them grow up to become powerful vassals of the Shugo. However, some of them became more powerful than the Shogo. These include the Miyoshi clan, under the powerful Shogaimyo Hosokawa, and the Mori clan, under the Aochi clan. These Kokujin ruled their lands by force. They took over land that had previously been the manners of aristocrats or temples and shrines and made it their own. Naturally, they paid no taxes to the lord of the manor. The manorial system of the Middle Ages completely collapsed after the Onin War. From this point on, Japan changed from the Middle Ages to the early modern period. Japan's structural society changed so much that some scholars even say that to understand today's Japan, one only needs to study Japan after the Onin War. The Onin War thoroughly undermined the authority of the Muromachi Shogunate. The Shogunate, which had originally held only a small number of shogunal territories, did not have a large number of its own troops. The shogun's orders were no longer obeyed by the local shugo. Each shugo was trying to expand its territory with the aim of increasing its own interests. The Warring States period begins. This is the subject of my talk, an explanation of villages after the Onan War. During the Muromachi period, villages called Sausen developed, which were self-governed by independent farmers. These Sausen were sometimes willing to rebel in order to protect their own interests from Shugo. However, the Shugo also had to ensure that Sausen was under his control in order to increase his own military power. As mentioned earlier, the Sausen were united by local warriors, called Kokujin, who were the local leaders. The Shugo would then unite these Kokujin under his control. How did Kokujin unite Sausen? The Kokujin, now under the control of the Shugo, had to mobilize the peasants of Samura as soldiers for the Shugo's war effort, rather than working for the benefit of Samura as they had done before. After the Onan War, the Sausen, which had been highly autonomous, was incorporated into the control of the Shogo. The Kokujin under the control of the Shogo would mobilize peasants from their own Sausen. In the early part of the Warring States period, peasants of high living rank with surnames were obliged to participate in battle as soldiers in the event of war. They prepared for battle, carrying swords and horses, with their own slaves as vassals. However, they did not have enough men to fight alone. In the later stages of the Warring States period, Many village peasants would also participate in warfare. They work as a shiguru. However, since they are farmers, they do not participate in battles during the busy farming season. Therefore, 
It is inevitable that warfare in the Warring States period would begin in the fall, after the harvest, and end next spring, when rice planting would begin. They did not join the war because they wanted to go. It was due to certain circumstances. This was a small cold period. Japan's climate had declined by an average of 1 degree Celsius. Cool summers, especially in summer, can seriously damage the growth of crops. This would lead to famine in the villages. Peasants wanted to attack other countries to survive. The constant warfare during the Warring States period was not only a result of the Shugo's desire to conquer, but also to accommodate the demands of the peasants. Ashiguru, peasants who invaded other countries, were not rewarded by their Shugo even if they won a battle. Instead, they were tacitly allowed to loot the cities they attacked. They would steal food, furnishings, and people. In particular, people were sold at high prices as slaves. According to the records of the time, people could be sold as slaves for as much as 1 million yen. This was a large cash income for poor farmers. Let us talk about village life here. Sausen is no longer a place for independent government as it was in the Muromachi period, but it still functions as a lifestyle as it did before. Records from this period are relatively extant, and we know relatively little about how people lived in the village. One of the unique customs of Japan is the custom of night crawling. This is when a man from the village sneaks into a village woman's house at night to spend the night with her. This is done with the consent of that man and woman, and the daughter's parents give their tacit approval. If a man commits a violent act without the consent of the woman, he will be judged by the village code. Thus, unlike the teachings of Christianity and Islam, Japanese society was sexually generous. In addition, this nocturnal crawling was sometimes performed on women who had husbands. Especially childless women seems to be actively involved in this practice. Naturally, this practice will often result in children whose fathers are unknown. However, such children are not discriminated against and are raised as village children. The villagers are a community of destiny. Children, the future of the village, are to be raised by the entire village. During the Warring States period, the population tended to decrease even if it did not due to war or famine. Children were carefully nurtured. In addition, women were free to leave and remarry without any emphasis on virginity. The status of women was so high that missionaries from Europe at the time were amazed. The farmers of Sausen were both farmers and warriors. As I mentioned earlier, they were not weak farmers like the ones in Akira Kurosawa's film Seven Samurai. Here, a man performs a revolutionary task. His name is Nobunaga Oda. He is a man who died by assassination just before he united the whole country. He did not allow the peasants to do what they had done in the past, which was to be soldiers, but provided them with a dedicated army. This allowed him to wage war all year round. Another effect of this was to prohibit the looting of captured towns by starving peasant soldiers as mentioned earlier. This had a great effect in unifying the country. The other effect of this was that it allowed the conquered towns to be incorporated into their own country without aggravating civil sentiments. His successor, Hideyoshi Toyotomi, who unified Japan, further promoted the separation of farmers and soldiers. In the previous society, farmers, warriors and warriors, could take credit and become samurai if they wished. Hideyoshi Toyotomi, who became the ruler of Japan, did not come from a family of samurai, but from farmers. He conducted a land survey called Taiko Kenshi, in which the amount of farmland taken was determined and the exact amount of taxation was determined. At the same time, it deprived the peasants of freedom of movement. Yes, peasants no longer had freedom of occupation. The children of warriors were to become warriors, and the children of peasants were to become peasants. When the Warring States period ended and peace prevailed, a system of status was established. The sword hunting ordinance was enacted to prohibit peasants from carrying weapons. This was done to prevent farmers from rising up in arms and to promote the establishment of the status system. In this issue, I explained the history of the village since the Onan War. 
I omitted the individual histories of the Warring States period. I plan to make a video about the Warring States period soon. The Edo Shogunate is opened by Ieyasu Tokugawa, who took power from Hideyoshi Toyotomi. Many of his policies followed those of Hideyoshi Toyotomi. The strict separation of samurai, townspeople, and farmers was a furtherance of Hideyoshi's policies. The Edo period would last more than 200 years of peace thanks to the skillful management of the Tokugawa regime. This is where the Edo culture bloomed. In the next issue, I will provide an explanation of the villages and towns of Edo. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button.